Hey guys, Fallen here, and today I am actually going to be bringing you a deck profile that was provided by my friend. This actually wasn't built by me, so forgive me if I'm a little unfamiliar with these cards and I take a little longer, but this is a deck that he's always giving me trouble with every time I was were to go up against him, so I feel like this is probably going to be a little bit more of a throwback kind of deck. Not, not necessarily that it's really old, but it's from a few formats ago. And it's from a time where I was really not into, like, playing too much. But this deck came out of the blue as probably one of the better decks of the time. And, of course, I am talking about Fire Fists. So, without any further ado, let's get on with it. With our monsters, we have one Gorilla. Now, when Gorilla destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you get to set a spell to your back row from your deck. So this helps us thin out the deck because, as you'll see, we don't have many monsters, but we have a lot of fire formations to get through. So at 1600 body, it's not too bad. And once per turn, you tribute a fire fist, and you can destroy, or I'm sorry, you tribute one of your fire fire formations, I believe. Yeah, you, you tribute a fire formation that's face up on your side of the field, and then you can destroy one spider trap card on the field. So it's a once per turn MST on your turn only, though. So it's not. The worst thing, not the best, but at only one, you might think it's a problem, but we have a few a few ways to get this out, and with, with a lot of the fire formations anyway, you're going to be able to search out any fire fist you get, so if you already have a good hand filled with things you're going to need, like maybe a rooster or a spirit, having that one gorilla stuck in your deck won't be too much of a problem, so you can probably get him out pretty easy. Next up, we got two spirits. So Spirit is their Tuner Monster, which yes, they do have a Synchro. It is a level 6 Synchro, and with this, it is level 3, and when it's normal summon, you can bring back one level 3 Beast Warrior. I think it just says Beast Warrior, I'm not sure, but basically you're going to be bringing back a Fire Fist with it. So you bring back one level 3 Fire Fist, and its effects are negated, or actually no, its effects are not negated from the graveyard, I'm thinking of Cold Soldier. Bring it back, face up defense position. But, and you cannot attack with anything other than Beast Warriors the turn that you do so. So it's not bad because you're going to get off Free Synchro and everything that you run in this deck, other than a few of the extra deck monsters, are Beast Warriors. So you're not even going to have to worry about that condition. Because if you didn't know, Fire Fist kind of got a Six Samurai thing going on where they swarm up the field and then pop your, pop your stuff. You're not going to have a good time with that. Alright, next up, of course, we got three Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear. So you bring him out, what does he do? Once per turn, card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, set one fire permission spell card. So a lot of these only let you set the spell cards, not really traps. Which is a good thing because the spells are arguably the better ones anyway. So and once he's done so, you can once per turn pop one fire fist I mean fire formation spar trap face up on your field, pop that, and you get to pop an opponent's monster. So he's monster removal, which isn't bad at all. So, always run through Bear. Never run any less. He's essential. Next up, we got Leopard. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist, Leopard. So, during your main phase, this card was normal special summon. Tribute one Fire Fist monster, and then you get to set a Fire Formation spell or a trap from your deck. You can only use this once per turn, but at least this gives you a... I can choose a trap or I can choose a spell. So it gives you a little bit more variety but at the cost of when your fire fist. But if you're tributing something low leveled or even even if you're just tributing like a bear that's been like, I don't know, fiendish chained or you think that this is just gonna extend your plays. Because you do run Wolf Park in this deck. I will get to it, but you do run Wolf Park, so you can easily bring him back. That's not a problem. Bring him back, XZ played. You can do it. So three leopard. Not bad. Next up. We got three Brotherhood of the Firefish Rooster. Now, Rooster is pretty good. So, if it's special summoned by the effect of a Fire Fist, which that's going to be Spirit because it's a level three, you get it back from the grave. So, you put this out, tribute it with uh, Leopard over there, then you get out Spirit, bring this back, Synchro, done. But when it's brought back by the effect of a Fire Fist, you can add a Fire Fist from your deck to your hand. It's only once per turn. But once per turn, you can also send a face of fire formation, spell, or trap. You control the grave and then set another one. So, if you got a tanky out 
you already used it, did its thing, okay, cool. Then you want to get out another tanky, extend your place, okay, cool. Or you want to get out a Gayuko or whatever it's called. It, it'll let you get out your place, basically. So if something's been negated or you've used it up and you just really need it to keep extending your plays, Rooster allows you to do that pretty easily. Next up, as I said, we got two Coach Soldier Wolf Bark. So Wolf Bark lets you bring back a level specifically a level four fire beast warrior type monster from your grave. Bring it back, its effects are negated. So basically, you got your bear out there, or you got your other wolf bark that's down there. You bring it back, you recycle it for an XZ play. And that's what it's here for. And as you'll see once we get into the extra deck. Everything is either a rank 3 or 4 XZ. So it's easy to go into XZ plays with Rooster and Spirit or Wolf Bark for your. Well, well, Rooster and Spirit or any other level 3 that was in your grave with Spirit for either a Synchro play or an XZ play and Wolf Bark for your easy rank 4 plays. Next up, we got Fire Formation Tencent. Now, Tencent is basically like a rush recklessly for the deck. Activate it, one Fire Fist monster you choose gains 700 attack to the end phase. Okay. And then after that's done, everything else on your field, every other Fire Fist on your field gains 300. So, it's decent considering a lot of these Fire Formation spells and traps only give you a 100 boost. But you have to think your back row is probably going to be filled with these things at one point. So that's a solid 500 for each Fire Fist you got on the field. Or, I don't know if you have, we only run one, so solid 700 plus for each one on the field. So it's not too bad, but I wouldn't say it's the best. But this will definitely get you out of something like, they're going to run you over, activate this, and, and you live. So that's not bad. Alright, next up, Fire Formation Tensu. Now Tensu is pretty good. It gives you an extra normal summon, and that's once per turn, not just the turn it's activated. So every turn you can normal summon another time, which you're probably not going to be, you're probably not going to be doing. But if you have to, it helps you. And every beast warrior gains 100 attack, so it's not bad. Not, uh, I'm sorry, not every beast warrior on the field, but only the ones you control gain the 100 attack. So don't worry about your opponent getting buffs off of it as well. Next up. Goyoku. So you have to target a spell or trap card on your opponent's side of the field that's set to activate this card. So when you do that, they can't activate that set card. And they can't activate it in the response to this either. So this is basically like a Sin Sen Hu for the deck. You remember that card? Target two cards on the field, those can't be activated. It was a trap. Anyway, this is basically th that for the deck. So you do that stops them from activating and you gain a hundred off so it's not bad it's it's, uh, it's pretty good maybe stop a D barrier if you're lucky stop uh, I don't know bottomless trap hole if you're lucky giant trap hole D prison you know something that could probably be a thorn in your side you could, you could stop it with this and as long as it stays face up they can activate it so Got, they got a breakthrough skill or a lost wind they can activate it so you don't gotta worry about them floating so d definitely decent not not the worst then of course the three of staple in any fire fist deck three fire formation tanky pretty simple it's activated you get a level four lower beast warrior from your deck add it to your hand everything on your field gains 100 attack so not bad and you can do that, oh no, you can only activate one of these per turn. So, yeah, it's not bad. Definitely three of staple. E any way you want to run this deck. I don't know why you wouldn't run it with this deck, because you're going to be very spell and trap hard, card heavy. And as long as you get one of these, or you get a fire fist out that can search out one of these, you're set, because you're never going to have really a bricked hand once you get into it. If you brick early on... Maybe you're just going to get destroyed, but you won't break later on with these. Next up, we have two-dimensional prisons. 
So, basically a big middle finger for your opponent. They want to attack you, you get to banish whatever monster was attacking. Now, I do believe that targets, so if they can't be targeted, and you're out of luck there. But if they can be targeted, there's nothing they can do about it. You just banish something that they can't bring back unless they have a, was it, burial from a different dimension? Yeah. So, this they can bring it back, you just banish something that was probably key to them, probably something that was going to beat you up round and round again. Every turn, probably going to smack into you with some decent damage. Well, you just banished it, so, I don't know, banish a five-headed dragon, banish a first of the dragons, banish, uh, I don't know, banish one of their kaijus. You know, whatever they, whatever you think they're going to slam into you with, you can banish it with deep prison, so pretty decent. Next, three MST, because we don't got twin twisters. <laughs> yeah, so three mystical space typhoons, basically it's the original play pop, which isn't bad. Because Gorilla is the only other monster in this deck, or the only other really spell trap removal that destroys on command. And you only run one gorilla, but you have three MSTs, so you can fall back on these pretty okay. And if if your back row is full, you can pop your own stuff, I guess. You know, make room for a new fire formation that'll probably help you. <laughs> or uh, your your opponent's got a full back row, pop a few of them, play it safe. They got a quick card on their monster, pop it. You know, but I don't know why I'm explaining MST to you. You you all know what MST does. We all we all know what MST does here. All right, now here's an interesting one. We got two wiretaps. Now I'd say, if I were you, run like seven tools of bandit, or, you know, trap jammer. You know, so something other than, than this, because I like to destroy the traps. I don't want them to just be shuffled back into the deck, which is what wiretap does. Negate the trap card, shuffle it back into the deck. I can understand. That's a hindrance. You're going to shuffle it back into the deck. They could probably draw into it again. Or they probably will never see the damn thing again. So, it could be really good or it could be really bad. Or, I mean, well, not really bad, I guess, in the sense that it's gone. But it, it could just do nothing for you, essentially. But, I mean, this does help you get rid of things like Breakthrough Skill or Lost Wind. They float in the graveyard. So, you can stop those things from floating, which isn't too bad. Or, I mean, I guess Paleozoics are traps. I don't know what the rulings are on this. They activate a Paleozoic, he can shovel it back into the deck. Whatever that does for you, go ahead. <laughs> then we got three Pot of Duality. I mean, two Pot of Duality. I would have ran three, personally. But, two Pot of Duality. So... You can't special summon the turn you activate it, which is a bummer. But you, you see the top three, and you add one to your hand, which isn't bad. And with a lot of these, um, with uh, fire formations, there there was one I think Tensu, fire formation Tensu I believe. It lets you normal summon again. So not being able to special summon isn't the end of the world for you, because you can you have outs to extra normal summons. So it's not too bad, but I say that. You're probably not going to activate this until main phase 2, if anything. So, definitely not a bad thing to have. Now, here we go. Yeah. Two Forbidden Lance. So, Forbidden Lance, pretty good. One face of monster loses 800 attack and unaffected by other spells and traps. This definitely combos well with uh, the Fire Formation Trap. Because that trap gives you 700 attack. So they attack you, hit them with a Forbidden Lance, they lose 800, then you activate your Fire Formation, you gain 700 more, so you t you're probably going to tower over them at that point. And then if they're getting boosted by like, I don't know, some stupid equip spell like a Mage Power or Moon Mirror Shield, they're not affected by it anymore. It's equipped to them, but it means nothing. Why? Forbidden Lance. They got a Field Spell up that's giving them like 300 extra attack, means nothing. Forbidden Lance. They're not affected by other spells this turn. So that's not bad. Or even trap cards for that matter. So, yeah. This is definitely a pretty good, uh, well, you just ran into me and you hurt yourself. So, not too bad. I, 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 I like running too. This, this, seems, this seems good. 
it's definitely uh, come back to bite me in the ass when I replayed against me, so I wouldn't say anything about it yet. Two is a good number. And here we go with our one of. These are the last spells and traps we have. And they're the, we, he's got one of each. Warning, Dark Hole, Book of Moon, Compulse, Torrential, Soul Charge, and Bottomless. So, start from right to left. Bottomless, they special summon a monster, negate it, destroy it, banish it. Not bad. Pretty simple. Everybody runs a bottomless, or at least I would suggest everyone runs a bottomless. You never know when it comes in handy. Then we got Soul Charge. Pay 1,000 for each monster you want to resurrect from the grave. So if you got wiped out, turn one, like how I did to him with my rainbow, bring it all back. Just bring it all back at the cost of your life points. So situational i guess because you can't always activate this in the times that you may want to because late game you're probably hanging on with maybe you know four four thousand three thousand life points and you really need to bring back about three or four cards but you can't because that'll cost you yeah i don't i personally don't like soul charge i personally don't like soul charge whatsoever but if you get it off early i guess it can help but, I, I don't know, I just have a personal dislike for this card. I know a lot of people love this card, so... That's all I'm going to say about that. Go ahead and run as many as you want. Torrential, they summon, you destroy everything on the field. Like a, it's like a black rose in your pocket. For monsters. So, let's see, Compulse. Definitely something that we don't see too much of now. But, target one monster field, return to the hand. You can do this for extra deck monsters, it'll return to the extra deck instead of the hand. So, links are coming up. They just spent like three monsters to bring out like some, I don't, I don't know, decode talker or firewall dragon, whatever it is. They just spent so much monsters trying to get him out and then boom, return to the extra deck. Now I know a lot of monsters can't be targeted by a lot of things nowadays. Targeting is kind of a, wow you still target kind of thing. So... Maybe it's not the best, but it's 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 an out. You got Book of Moon, flip them face down, attack into them, or basically just stop them from attacking you or stop their effects. So, yeah, Book of Moon's pretty pretty good. Dark Hole, destroy all monsters on the field. Not as slow as Torrential Tribute because you don't gotta set it. So, basically, you're running two Dark Holes in this deck. I'd rather run two actual Dark Holes in this deck than Torrential Tribute, but I can see why you 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 would want turn to tribute. You know, let them build up their field, let them get off all their summons, and then nuke them. Instead of waiting for them to build up that field, hit you hard, and then nuke them, and wait for the response. So, I don't know. Run two torrentials or run two dark holes. Do 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 what you feel. Change this up to however you feel like would be better for you. And solemn warning. So this isn't bad. In, in the sense that you only have to. 2,000 life points so it's not a lot really honestly early game it's not a lot late game it could be kind of kind of a problem to do so but 2,000 life points is a pretty good marker I mean it's not something outrageous like 3,000 or half your life points well I mean late game half your life points probably doesn't mean much because if you're hanging on by like a thread you just cut the thread a little thinner and it doesn't matter no not at all because if you're hanging on with like 200 life points ooh, 100 ah scared a spark a sparks could take me out now <laughs> well this isn't bad because a summon negates it spell trap card negates it an effect negates it well monster effect is actually that includes an effect that special summons a monster so that is good, but, you know, definitely Solemn Morning is okay. If you got Solemn Strikes, maybe use those instead. <laughs> Who knows? Or whatever you feel. So then into our extra deck now, we have Abyss Dweller. So this guy doesn't really fit in with this deck as water types, or what you would probably want to use to make him, to get off the whole water types and gain 500 attack. But, on the plus side, he does stop Grave Effects. The turn that he activates is uh, detaching. So you detach and you stop grave effects from happening. So that's really good. Silent Honor Arc. 
take out something that they special summon, equip it to this card, and then you can detach and destroy, I believe. No, detach if you were to be destroyed. So, I believe it doesn't target. Yeah, it does not target. So, they just special summoned, uh, I don't know. Let's go, I don't know, Vehicroids are getting new support. Let's say they sum let's say they summon their uh, big Power Ranger type uh, vehicle right on the field. You, you take it, you equip it to this card, and then what can they do? Nothing, because they just wasted all their resources trying to make that card, and now you have it, and it gets sent to the grave whenever this thing would be destroyed. So, non-targeting removal. It's great. Got Gaga Ga Cowboy, which is basically 800 burn damage, because I, I don't ever see anybody really using the attack portion. I really only ever see them using the defense because his defense is subjectively better than his attack for his level. So yeah, defense position, detach, and your opponent takes 800. So he's a free Ukazvi. Then we got Black Ship of Corn. If you're in a mirror match, a lot of things are probably going to be weaker than uh, 2100 right off the bat anyway. Or if they just got some pieces out there like you catch it, if you disrupt their plays early on I guess, like in an ABC kind of thing. Pop them, destroy them, they take a thousand. So, decent. Gets rid of the smaller puzzle pieces in this thing. My stroke, basically Book of Moon, the monster. So, decent defense. Okay attack for level 4. Or rank 4. Diamond Dire, you're one off. You can destroy, sack him. Or because you have Beast Warriors on your field, most of the time anyway, sack one of your Beast Warriors. They got like Fiendish Chained or Shadow Spelled. Or some other stupid shit like that. Destroy it and then destroy a monster on your opponent's side. Decent 2k beater. Leviar. Go into it. Eh, it's decent, I guess. I don't know how any of your stuff would get banished. I guess if your opponent also runs a deep risen or a bottomless trap hole. Some something that would banish. Uh Chaos Sorcerer, something like that. They banish something key to you, bring it back with Leviar. Not bad. Alucard, basically, uh, he sets things uh, face down, I believe. Let's see, does he do that? Or Oh, no, I'm sorry, that was my stroke. Alucard, detach to destroy one set card on the opponent's side of the field. It does not specify between spells, traps, or monsters, so you have your choice of destroying anything set on your opponent's field. Definitely not bad, and if you get into a situation where they're going to run over something you need on the field... You book a moon it, and they can't attack it. They can only attack Alucard. So, decent enough, I guess? I, I don't know. Then we got Castell. Definitely a staple. Attach two, return something to the deck. Easy, target, non-targeting, removal. Done. And, of course, we have our Fire Fist. Brother of Fire Fist, Lion Emperor. Detach an XZ material. Target a fire monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, but you cannot summon it or any monsters with the same name this turn. So he brings back your combo pieces. Basically, Lion Recycler. Brings back your combo pieces, but you can't use them for the full turn. So he's got like a whole Sangan thing going on right now, which I don't like. But 2200 for rank 3, that's not bad. Then we got Cardinal, probably one of the better outs. Rank 4. 1800 attack, 2200 defense. Not that's that's decent, but the better part is you return two of your fire formations or fire fists from your side of the field or your graveyard. Return them to the deck, and you can also return two cards from your opponent's field or graveyard to their deck. So, yeah, basically he's a another Castell, but for fire fists and. He lets you recycle your fire formations, which is great. And he also makes your opponent lose their field. Or lose their floating cards in the graveyard. Which can really disrupt them. So, Cardinal, not bad. I'd definitely probably say run another one of him. Then we have Fire King. Tiger King, my bad. When he's summoned, you get to set a fire formation spell or trap directly from your deck. So he's... Probably the better one to go into early game if you can. Then when you detach, you can negate the effects of all face-up effect monsters on the field except Beast Warriors. So, what does that mean? 
everything you control is probably going to be fine at this point, but everything your opponent controls, all their effects are negated until the end of your opponent's turn. So that's a full turn that they can activate their monster's effects. That's pretty disruptive. So I would say that definitely run another one of him if you can. If you want to throw him in there, replace something else, like the Alucard. I, I probably wouldn't run Alucard, but he does, so that's him. But I'd probably either run another Cardinal or this Tiger King here, so... Uh, again, but rank 4, 2200, 18 defense, not bad, decent beater. And when he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can send three fire formation spawn drop cards you control to the graveyard. And you get to special summon two level 4 lower beast warrior type monsters from your deck with this same attack in defense position. So basically, when he leaves, send three of your fire formations back to the, or not back to the deck, to the graveyard, and then you get two level four lowers with the same attack which probably gonna be the same card so you can get two bears back out start popping monsters or something but ultimately you're gonna be able to get back into another rank four so he set you up for more rank four plays which isn't too bad here we got Ragna Zero which is destruction and draw power in the same card so two level four monsters generic enough and you can just detach to destroy one monster on the field whose attack is a different from its original attack. So they got a field spell going. Anything affected by that field spell is a target for this thing. They got something with an equip spell on it, it's a target for this thing. And when it gets destroyed, you get to draw a card. So you pop their monster, and then you go plus one for the card. Which is very decent. 2400 body, really good for rank four. So yeah, definitely. Probably run him. Probably run two. And then for your synchros... You only run two, but, well, he only runs two. And these are your Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Horse Prince. So, bring back a, or no more summon your spirit, bring back a rooster, and then you go into Horse Spirit here. Or Horse Prince here. And when he's Synchro Summon, you can Special Summon one level three or lower Fire Monster from your deck. And after you Synchro Summon him, you can't Special Summon level five or higher monsters. Which isn't a problem because you don't run any level fives at all in this deck. These are your only synchros. I mean, you could add more synchros in. I mean, you can swarm the field pretty easily. So, you bring out a wolf bark, bring out your level 4, then use the extra special, extra normal summon from your Tensu, bring out Spirit. Spirit brings out another thing, or another rank, th or another level 3 from the grave. And you can have a field presence and go into like something stupid like a Star Eater. Which isn't too bad. I mean, it doesn't get a lot of the Beast Warrior buffs, but you can definitely keep synchroing with it, which isn't a problem. So, Horse Prince, decent enough at a synchro. 2200, which I see is a trend with these Fire Fist uh, extra deck monsters. 2200 seems to be a staple attack form, which I don't like. I feel like they should have been a little stronger, considering a lot of these Fire Fist monsters are relatively weak. Oh, with all that being said, though, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below on what you think, and subscribe if you're interested for more of these. I'm going to try to be doing openings. These deck